despite L Tree fans' sincere effort to prolong the pain, the game has finally ended. Dos Acero, Tyler Adams with an absolute golazo of a goal in the first half. Gio Reyna with a volley in the second half. And the legend of Dos Acero not only win goes on, but also seven games and Mexico still cannot beat us. Seven games, five years. Seven games, five years. The gap between the U.S. and Mexico is undeniable at this point. It's, it's been undeniable for a long time, but it keeps getting confirmed over and over and over again. Guys, what more can you say? We are the better team by far. JD and Tack and I had a bit of an argument before the Jamaica game about who was the kings of CONCACAF, about who was the best team in the region. And once again, this ju just confirms it. Um, it wasn't the prettiest game for sure. I don't think we played our best soccer by any means, but we got the job done and we'll celebrate it. And we won the only team still to win the Nations League in CONCACAF is the mm. United States of America. We love our boys. Uh, Tyler Adams pulling something out of his ass that nobody, including his old coach, Jesse Marsh, knew he had. Not even roster. he knew. I don't think he even knew that. But what a hit after a very poor first half. What a hit. Second half, we look a little better. Definitely more dominant in the second half, I would say. Created a few more chances. Gio with that great volley. Why do they keep doing this with the chant over and over? Like, don't they know what's going to happen at this point? What are they trying to accomplish? Well, Alexi actually finally made a good point. Alexi on Twitter. He what said he that every time you stop the game, you're kind of rewarding this attitude because when they're saying it, they know it's going to happen. They want to just create like a chaos. And chaos. Yeah. So you're kind of rewarding them. So you it's need like to find attention to a spoiled kid. Exactly. So Alexi finally made a good point right there. And, wow. and what's what's the best way to do it? I guess maybe the I don't because you can't even deduct points in World Cup qualifying because there is none for them. I don't know. Well, you could deduct other things. I mean, you could deduct stuff from the Federation, Copa America. I mean, you can't deduct points from Copa America, but it's well, sad for the players, right? Because it's not their fault, but the fans keep ruining it. Um, death taxes and dos acero. Yep, yep. How many dos aceros has that been now since uh, since 2019? Woke up qualifying was one. Woke up qualifying. Woke up qualifying. Well, let's go through the results. 3-2 in the Nations League final in 2021. 1-0 in the Gold Cup final, Miles Robinson in 2021. And then 2-0 in the, the World Cup qualifying. qualifying at home. Then 0-0 was away. The, the away game, which we yeah. could have won, right? Gio almost assisted Pifak. Um, and Tres then Acero we in the Nations League. Tres Acero. And then the 1-1. One, 1-1 one, one, one one draw with that weird B-team friendly. And then this is game number seven. So only two Dos Aceros, but, you know, many others. Yeah, this is we had a Tres Acero. We had two Dos Aceros. Either way, the goal difference with, with this clashes is something like 16 to four or something crazy like that. So, yeah, it's um, this was the job. Go there, win the Nations League, right? We knew this was the best team in CONCACAF. They did the job. Almost didn't against Jamaica. We got lucky, but it's done now. Well done. Congratulations to the boys. Congratulations to Greg. Congratulations to Tyler Adams, man. What a hit. To be the, to be gone from injury that long and to come and hit the ball like that. Whew, in a moment, too, where we were definitely not playing well, where it was very 50-50. It's not like we were dominating, I don't think. But to hit that well and then to come in and, and secure it in the second half, great. Um, there's a lot of positives to take from this game most of all that Gio Reyna continues to perform and that now we have two reliable sixes. We don't need to play Musa as a six anymore. That Adams is back. We have Adams and Johnny Musa can be mm -hmm. Wes's backup. Like Malik can be Gio's backup. Um, okay. So let me, let me ask you one thing before we move on with that, from what you just said, um, would you say Luca de la Torre might be a bit in trouble with this spot? Yeah, because he's neither a 10 nor a six right? He's an eight, sort of. But he's versatile enough that he can also play wide. I think he's in trouble, maybe, if there's a 23-man roster, right? But mm -hmm. if there's any injuries or anything like that, I mean, personally, what I would do is not take four wingers. I would just take Luca De La Torre as one of the... Because Weston can play wide, Musa can play wide, Gio can play wide, Tillman can play wide. Like, 
I, you know, I'm not too worried about that, to be honest, but our midfield is deeper than it's ever been. There's no place for a Leonard Maloney who's starting in the Bundesliga, right? Um, you know, a Pax and Aronson or a Diego Luna or anybody like that is going to have to work really hard just to be the third choice 10 um, behind Gio and Tillman. Um, okay. Death taxes and dos acero. Thank you, Nate. Mexico fans equals the definition of all bark, no bite. Uh, thank you. Seth Floyd, I will now refer to the Mexican national team as L L L L L L L tree. Always feels good to beat those guys. Is it going to feel less good after a while? Uh, tack. Like if this keeps happening, at what point do we lose the spice of the rivalry because it's so one-sided? So I don't think it will lose it because the L3 fans are so delusional. They'll, they'll literally quiet down now for like, Till the Copa America, they'll stay quiet. Like, they won't say a word. Once we're there, all of a sudden, they start talking trash again. And then it looks like we might have actually a friendly in September with Canada and Mexico. That's what the rumors were. And when we're going to go back to play them, they're going to bring back the whole nonsense once again. They lose, and it, that, that's how it goes with them. So it would be boring if they just accepted defeat. But it always feels like they accept defeat when it happens. And they suffer they short, short term memories. Yeah. yeah, the short memory, and and then, and then they just go because they were talking trash. They, like again, they're better than this. Santi Jimenez is that. Santi Jimenez came in and he was shit. He tried to get a dive. He was terrible. That's the overrated center forward in Concacaf that they keep claiming is the greatest thing to ever come out of Concacaf. And and honestly, he looked as bad as Henry Martin. Real Madrid's going to pay eighty million for him though, Tack. Don't you know? That's what they told me. Um, okay, Cole. Actually, I want to talk a little bit towards the end of the stream about Mexico too, because I think they need to be very, I mean, we've been saying this for a while, but Mexico's in big, big trouble. I'm at the stadium and just saw a brawl, man. This was a wild experience. Uh, Cole, I hope everyone's okay. Was it a brawl between us and L tree fans or what was happening there? L tree needs to be suspended from Copa. Every time they are losing, they pull out the chant and cry. I mean, I don't know about suspending them from Copa. That seems very harsh on the players, especially. But yeah, these fans, man. I don't know what the solution is, Tack. We can maybe talk about that in a little bit. They need to start kicking fans out for the chant. The problem, Stephen, is kicking fans out is not a straightforward process. If you're trying to eject tens of thousands of fans from the stadium, it can get violent. So you have to be a little careful with that. Uh, keeping tab says Chris Richards was poor and he disappointed me this match. Yeah. I thought he was quite shaky today. Chris, Richards. I thought he was our worst player today, actually. Yeah. Which is bizarre because he's been so good for crystal palace recently, but this, mm -hmm. this camp, he did not impress. This shit is too easy at this point on to bigger and better things. Well, that's what's next Copa America, right? That's where we're really going to be challenged. That's really where we're going to see. Can Burhalter now beat a big team? Right, because all of this stuff, winning the Nations League, this was the minimum, bare minimum expectation. Right, we talked we talked about this before the game. Get it done, job done. Maybe I wasn't perfect, but doesn't matter. You did your job. Um, is Weya still the guy on the right at this point? I don't see a challenger. Do you see a challenger, Zach? No, I, I also I also thought he was good. I think yeah, I don't think game. Weya was poor today. I don't I mean he wasn't involved in any of the goals, but I, I wouldn't say he was poor. I thought he was a threat. I thought he worked hard. Uh, he did a lot of defensive work on that right hand side when mm -hmm. we lost the ball. So I, I wasn't. I mean, I don't know. I don't think Weya had a bad camp. It might not have been his best camp. And against I'm, Jamaica, he was one of the least worst players. I would say he wasn't uh, horrible. Yeah, yeah. I he thought he was horrible. one of our brighter players against Jamaica. Yeah. Kayo says, I'm glad for my switch Mexico to U.S. So are losers fan. Were you an L Tree fan, Kayo, and you just recently became a USM&T fan? Welcome. All are welcome. And hopefully that will continue. How do you lose to Triple G every time since 2019? <laughs> 2-0. Well, you were saying on your stream, Jack, imagine if we actually had a good coach, what this could look like. Yeah, the, the thing about Burhalter, and we're going to talk about him today. I thought, I thought Burhalter was good today. Uh, we'll talk about in details. I thought it was good. I'll, I'll say what I didn't like, but for the most part, I thought the, the substitutions were well-timed. Um, Tyler Adams that I was very skeptical about ended up turning out to be money when he, him starting. Uh, but it doesn't change the overall perspective of Burhalter. I think we need a better coach and he's done a very bad job for the most part. But today I thought Burhalter was good for the most part. 
Yeah, we can we can sort of um, dissect that as we talk about the game. Mm -hmm. Never seen Richards look that uncomfortable with the ball. Not just with the ball, even against the ball. Like winning aerial challenges, he looked nervy. He looked quite nervy. That was, mm -hmm. I think, what was worrying. I mean, in some ways, it's not. If it's like a quality issue versus like a, a confidence issue, that's two two separate things. I prefer a confidence issue because confidence can be regained. Um, but yeah, Richards, this camp, man, he really didn't make a, a strong case for himself. Crazy. The last time Mexico scored on us in a competitive game was Diego Linus. Oh my God. Is that true? Wait, wait, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Let me think. Yeah. Cause we beat them two nil, nil, yeah, nil. You're, you're right. Three oh nil. The last time. Oh my God, Joey. That's a, that's a, and that's a guy that never scores. <laughs> right. The last time Mexico. Oh my God! Scored a competitive goal with Diego Linus in June or May, June of 2021, three years ago. The Kashiko game was a friendly, so that one doesn't count. Um, chance won't stop until L Tree players speak up. See, I don't know about that, Alexander. I think even if they spoke up, I, these L Tree fans—they're just trying to cause a ruckus. The ones who do that, I don't know if they care so much what the players think. Because Edson Alvarez, I remember in a different game when it was happening, went and talked to them, and they still kept doing it. Feed us, Argentina, <laughs> Ben. Let's let's pump the brakes. We have a lot to prove. Um, still, um, yeah, I, I think um, I think we did what we should have done. Yeah, yeah, I. I it's exciting and we want to celebrate it, but perspective. This is the worst L tree team in probably 30 years. Second best in our region is a full strength Jamaica. Yeah. I mean, if a full strength Jamaica, we'll see what happens now if Leon Bailey and we'll see what they do in Copa. Right. But I, yeah, definitely. I mean, is it fair to question or is Jamaica better than Mexico at this point? No, I don't think so. I think Mexico will probably defeat them though, but, but, well, remember, like score lines also depend on the approach of the coach. The Jamaican coach recognized he's not the better team. They also got an early goal. We got to remember that. And he just sat back. We talked about this in the game. If Mexico just freaking swallowed their pride and tried a more defensive, because they, they weren't defensive at, at all. Yeah. They played against the U.S. as if both teams are in the same level. And I, I'm sorry, Mexico's not at the same level. Um, as the United States, and they haven't been for at least three to four years. The, the United here's States the issue, Tack, when playing the way you play is so stamped into your DNA, I don't think you know how to play defensively. You know what I mean? Like, can Mexico even get into that mentality at this point? I don't know. Maybe they can. I'm just asking the question. Well, They've maybe never it's played time. that way. Maybe it's history. time. Maybe it's time because how many times are you going to get spanked? Until Because let's be honest here. The players that Mexico have in yeah. seven matches, they can pull one win against the U.S. in sure. seven match. But you have to be willing to adjust if you're worse. Yeah. And that's also why I think the U.S. thrives so much against Mexico because usually the teams in CONCACAF take a more defensive approach against the U.S. and that's why the U.S. struggles. Mexico is an inferior team. They are worse, but they just don't accept it. Right. Right. And they're going to continue to get spanked. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. That's, I can't see. And also, just talent wise, we'll talk about this later, but talent wise, I don't see this getting better for Mexico in the future. If you look at their youth teams, if you look at their progress, I mean, the guy they're most excited about is Fidel Barajas, who might actually end up playing for the US. Like, there's not much there for Mexico to get excited about. And honestly, their best player today was their oldest player at almost 40 years old. So, a lot of question, a lot of question marks about Mexico's development processes and what the future looks like for our region. Because honestly, as fun as this is, it's not good for us to have so many shit teams in the region. It's really not. All right. Uh, do, 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 do. Remember. Okay, first, uh, the only reason the US MNT was because of talent, not because of Triple G. He has to thank Adams and geo look tack and i are very critical of greg i still think he got some things wrong today um but certainly from his lineup i thought his lineup was good today and his substitutions were good today um i still think geo was misused in this game and we can talk about that in a little bit we'll give credit to greg for where it's due but let's make no mistake you should be beating this team handily right this is not 
oh my god, amazing. It's like, okay, good. You did the thing you were supposed to do. Remember, we're 10 seconds away from total embarrassment. Overall, this camp was a B minus at best. Again, final results, minimum papers over our problems. I agree, mm-hmm. David. I think it does paper over our problems. Copa will be the big test, right? You, there's no hiding in Copa. You've got to perform in Copa. So that is, that's the next thing. That's the next thing. Um, Guacamole United, Pete, incoming call from Jurgen. Oh, oh, you have to do it. You're gonna. I'll have to do, do Jurgen after after we finish these super chats. Johnny played very well. I'm impressed. I thought he had one or two shaky moments, but other than that, I thought he was good. He looked he looked kind of poor in the first 15 minutes that he was on the the first 15 of the the second half, which was when he came on, like a uh-huh. few shaky moments on the ball, and then the last 30, he was very ball secure and and defensively, he he had a lot of like good moments, but. First 15 minutes were a bit weird. Maybe nervous. I don't know. Yeah. El Tree should hire Jurgen. Oh my God. Can you imagine Jurgen telling them to step on our toes? All right. Uh, TS. Hi, boys. I feel we actually we looked actually strong today. I liked Geo Deep. Oh, that makes one of us. I felt like we had some control of the game. I know you disagree, but still appreciate the coverage. Thank you, TS. I appreciate it. Look, disagreeing is fine. This is what soccer culture is. We're discussing our views on the game. And, you know, that's what this community is all about. But thank you. TLC Suns went to Costa Rica versus Honduras, and their fans chant the same stuff. So it's not just Mexico. It's common in Central America. Yeah, I think it's common in Central America, but they're trying to get rid of it. Um, I know not everybody agrees with it, and there's differing opinions. But I'm going to try to keep this to soccer as much as possible because I'm not Spanish. I don't speak Spanish. I know there are a lot of LGBTQ people in, you know, who do speak Spanish, who don't like it, but I know there's a lot of conflicting opinions about it. Greg Berhalter himself says the solution is to chant back scoreboard. Yeah, I mean, maybe ignoring it this at this point might be the best route, sort of like stop giving the kid attention and he'll stop pulling out the tricks. I don't know. Uh, Robinson is being run into the ground every camp and tournament he's called in. We need serious depth and alternate options at the left back position. I agree, but we don't really have that right now. Like, there's nobody of any... Qual- I mean, Christopher Lund is probably next up, but there's obviously a clear drop-off there. So, yeah, it's an issue that we don't have good backup, but I don't know there's much we can do about that right now. Certainly not going into Copa America. Well, it's probably going to be Dest, the backup. and Scott Yeah, Lewis, that's the right? truth. It's going to be Dest, you know. Um Steven Nagishi, correct me, but when will USSF put their foot down with these chants by Mexican fans whenever they play here? USSF are equally complicit. Well, this is CONCACAF, right? This is not, the US soccer is not the organizer of this tournament. It's CONCACAF. Um, It's this Canadian fellow who you see on your screen right now handing out the second place trophy to the second best team in CONCACAF, El Tri. Um. Really on, U.S. really needs a center forward to develop more because you you can clearly see that's a big piece they're missing. See, I disagree, Ruben. I think there are plenty of pieces, but we don't get them good quality service most of the time. Burhalter's system doesn't generally give good quality service for forwards. This has been an issue for years now. And, and we have guys doing well at good levels now, but it doesn't translate to the national team, mostly because of the system. Stable Genius says, I knew we were going to win because Mexico will never play us defensively. It would be too much for their pride to handle. Yeah. No, I mean, at what point is it going to be getting defeated over and over again going to be worse? But really, I think the biggest issue is just they don't have quality in that team anymore. Mexico no longer has difference makers, says Mac Ryan. Only Chucky. Chucky's not a difference maker. To be honest, he's not a, a difference maker anymore. I mean, this guy is worse than Tillman at PSV, who's not even a starter for us. You have to think of it that way. I I think, again, if in the past, we didn't have the difference makers as much, right? It was like hoping Lendon or Clint would do something. Right. Um, And as a result, we played defensively and held on. We we recognized that. We accepted that we weren't the better opponent. And we were like, to get the result, we're going to have to play ugly, soccer terrorism, and, and go on in transition, long ball, and see what we can do. Until Mexico accepts that, they're going to continue to get spanked. They will. The players that the U.S. has, the Mexico will not outplay us. That that's no. the thing they have to realize. They have to beat us, not by outplaying us. That's how yeah. they have to beat. But they don't realize. It. Like, obviously, I'm going to exaggerate and make a point here. But you don't see Fulham 
trying to beat Manchester City by trying to outplay them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm not saying that's the gap, but I'm just saying like that's not yeah. how they approach it. Oh, look, it's BJ. <laughs> Our boy BJ. Uh, Canada has more. Yeah, I agree. Canada has more difference makers. Jonathan David, Alfonso Davies, guys like that um, than Mexico does. Honestly, Tejon Buchanan would start for Mexico. He would. 100% on the right. Reem man of the match for me. Ooh, hard hard to not give that to Tyler Adams, man. <laughs> Just for that goal alone, hard to not give it. I think, I don't know who won it. Do you guys know who won it? Uh, what won? Best player? No, man of the match, yeah. I saw Gio. Gio's holding a ball. Yeah, like I didn't a, know like, what that ball was. He's not the it's probably player scorer. of the tournament for Gio. Maybe player of the tournament, yeah. I mean, he, he saved the U.S. against Jamaica and scored the second goal today. To me, he is the yeah. player of the tournament. Yeah, for sure. Uh, amazing. In a camp where people were saying we he shouldn't start or we should leave him home altogether. Mm -hmm. uh, A-Rob Richards, A-Rob Des were all shaky defensively. Reem steadied everything on defense. Triple G must have listened to BJ today. So, Barney, I don't think that Reem is necessarily man of the match, but I 100% agree with you. A lot of people were saying we need to get rid of Reem. He's too old and all of that. And... I think he showed again today how crucial he still is for this team, at least going into Copa America. Um, I, you know, even though he's been benched at Fulham, and sure, we could probably make the argument that come 2026, he might not be that guy anymore. But up until Copa America, I still think Reem and Richards are is the you know the pairing that we need to have. Um, Richards needs to get his confidence back, or maybe this was just a blip because Richards is not usually this bad, right? We see him playing well for us in the past and obviously now playing really well for Crystal Palace. So there's no, for me, there's no question Reem is, the, is a starter. And as of right now, Richards is still my starter next to him. Um, Spencer, Spence Callis, 100% of Mexico is depressed and 1% of the USA even knows this happened. Always sweet to beat Mexico in their sport. Grow the game. Mexico should hire Mourinho. Oh, can you imagine how fun that would be having Mourinho? He would have them be so uber defensive and they would never accept it. They would never accept a coach like Mourinho. It, it, it culturally, it just won't work. Um, I've been trolling the L tree channels and they still feel they are the superior federation. They just need to change coaches. Yeah, but they said that about Tata now. Remember when Jaime Loz Lozano was the new the guy who cared, he was going to, you know, this team that won the gold cup is going to now, nothing's changed guys. Ultimately it's really down to the players. They don't have good players anymore. They're, they're golden generation aged out and they never replaced them. And that's the truth. And they don't have anybody coming through. They really don't. Uh, but yeah, denial is probably the best way to put it. If the Mexican Federation gave a slight crap about their fans and team, then well not chant poop, but I guess it's still not working. <laughs> the chant isn't that deep. LOL says Jose Lopez USA under 19, three, two England today. Cole Campbell brace. Yeah, I heard about that. Good for him. Geo stats in finals are insane. Two goals, two assists. Um, no, actually. Three goals. He scored in the 2021 final as well. He scored off a rebound. Yeah. You don't know. So, so you're right. Two goals. One goal today and one in 2021. And then he got two assists against Canada and one assist in that Mexico game. Also, he took the corner that McKenzie. Did he scored. get both assists against Canada? He got the Balogun one. He get he got both. Richards. Yeah. There were both assists from Geo off the. Oh corner. yeah, the corner. Well, I, I'll double check here while we go through. I'll check all Geo stats. Me. Trust me. That's five goal contributions in Nations League finals. For Giovanni Reina. And uh, interestingly, he has the most goal contributions per 90 minutes played of any USMNT player since Qatar 2022. But hey, we got to, hey, 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 bench him. Actually, don't even bench him. Let me ask the question that Jesse Marsh asked. Yeah. Would he even, would he even be in the team if there wasn't that Burhalter drama? Wasn't that what Jesse was asking? Mm. Yeah. Jesse, and, and what's funny was when Jesse said it, you know what Jimmy Conrad said? Because I rewatched it. Jimmy was like, oh, good question. It's like, no, it's not a good question. It's a very stupid question. It's a Jesse stupid Marsh. question. And I'm kind of happy that Burhalter called it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I No, I agree with Burhalter too. Like, Burhalter's playing Geo, not in his best position, but at least centrally today. 
and Geo keeps delivering. So for me, Geo is a top two player for us up there with Pulisic now in terms of talent, effectiveness, all of that. Okay. As much as he's having a rough time at his club, he's still absolutely balling out for us. So he might not be as proven as Pulisic. He doesn't have Pulisic's history for sure. But right now, I would say, I would argue he is as important for us as Christian Pulisic is. And maybe some people don't agree with that. But I think we have a few players that are locked in starters for different reasons. Like a few because they're just too good to bench and others because they're good and there's no backup. So, for example, A-Rob. Locked in starter. One, because he's good, even though he struggled this camp. And two, because there's no backup. Now, simply because of quality right now, I think Gio, McKenney, and Pulisic are three locks to me. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they're locks, but I don't know if I would necessarily put McKenney on the same level as Gio and Pulisic. I would put him as a lock. I know he struggled this camp, but I, I would put No, he's a lock starter. But mm -hmm. I like in terms of importance to the team. Yeah, I guess no. I guess he does other intangibles that are important too. Yeah. Um, but either way, for me, Gio is a top two, top three player for this team. Gio playing at the six ish to show Nuno a new look. I don't think that's why they did it. I think that's just Berhalter ball. If he can't get in at the ten, then maybe he can fit there. Look, I don't think it really matters what Gio does here. I don't think it's going to translate to Forest. I think he doesn't really fit the way Nuno wants to play. Although now. He might get more game time based simply on the fact that Forest have a very real chance of getting relegated. Aren't they like 18th now after this point reduction? Um, yeah, they, they, they're, they're behind I think Luton they're, again. They're behind Luton Town. They are behind Luton Town. They are behind Luton Town. Yep, they are one point behind Luton Town. So they're still very much there. And if they're not winning games, there's few people you would think to bring off the bench more than Giovanni Reyna. Let's hope he gets them. I, you know, we've talked about this many times. It doesn't suit the way they play at all. Geo does not suit the way they play. They're a very direct, very quick team, very intense, lots of running, lots of two-way players. Geo is a tempo setter and a playmaker, and they already have one. He's not quite like Geo, but they're not going to bench him for a low knee when they're going to sell him probably in the summer for 25, 30 mil. Well, also, um, they're a team where everyone that's playing on the field has to do a lot of defensive work. And even though Gio did a lot of defensive work today, I actually think that, today he did a ton. That is still not his primary attribute. That's no. the thing to say. No. Is A Rob really one of the best left backs in the EPL? No. <laughs> no, he's not. No. Who said that? I, I don't know who's been said. Maybe a few overzealous USMNT fans have said that. I have never said that. I think I he's, think he's roughly where like Fulham is, like probably 12, 13. Yeah, that's, mid table. That's right. you know, yeah, he's rough. Right. His level of left back in the Prem is is roughly Fulham. That's what I think. Yes, I agree. And, you know, there's always rumors about Liverpool and Chelsea and Man United. Honestly, he should stay at Fulham. He should. He should stay at Fulham. He's not a level of left back to play for any of those teams. And what will end up happening is he'll get benched. Um. Does his technical ability just suddenly improve when he plays for Fulham? Not really. He gets in good positions and gets good crosses off, but most of his performances for um, most of his performances for Fulham are about his good defensive work. Um, so yeah, speed in transition and low crosses. Like he has, he has very limited technical ability in tight spaces. If you put him in that situation, he usually loses the ball. And his crosses, when he tries to actually cross it, it's not that good. But when he whips in those hard, low crosses, they're very effective. Yeah. David Howard says, haven't you said that Adams is poor at bringing the ball out of the back? He's more poor at long-range distribution or incisive mm -hmm. distribution. I thought Reyna as, a, Reyna as a shuttler coming out of the back was effective. Mm, effective might be a stretch. It's a trade-off, but it worked. So hear me out. Could, can Reyna build out of the back in that position? Yes. Does that mean it worked? I would argue the problem then is you don't put Geo in the places where he's most effective, right? It's like playing Geo wide. Can you play him there? Sure. Is that his best position? Is that where he can best help the team? No. So I didn't love it. And we'll talk about that when we get into like the pros and cons. We'll talk about why I didn't love that role for Geo. But, you know, you could easily have Weston McKinney do that and Geo pushed higher up the field. Like we talked about this on Tax Stream, just switch those roles and it would have been just fine. If Adams needs help, McKinney can do it, you know, or if Musa's playing, Musa can do it. Um, 
All right. My fellow soccer dads are mudded. Good losers. <laughs> okay. The, the geo haters, I would argue, are mudded. You know, oddly enough, after the Jamaica game, there are still a lot of people arguing that he shouldn't start. I mean, not a lot, but there were a few. Like, some people never seem to learn. Um, Tack, let's start with the positives. I mean, obviously, we beat El Tree. I'm just going to say that my main positive is Tyler Adams didn't get injured. I mean, the goal, of course, is amazing, but he didn't get injured, and that means, fingers crossed, he'll be available for Copa America. So Yeah, uh, now we just got to hope that Bournemouth plays him slowly, let him get a few minutes here and there. And now, what is it? We're at end of March, so he has April and May, two months. So Two months to get it. easily goal. be 90 minutes fit by then, easily. Yeah. Um, so Tyler, definitely a positive with that. Didn't get injured. Um was reliable. Like, just one thing to make it clear. Um, Tyler, until he scored a goal, he wasn't putting out a masterclass performance. He was being reliable. He looked good. Didn't look rusty at all. But, but the goal was just something was like that he pulled out of nowhere that no one really expected. So, Tyler, for that, um, I, th- I guess I'm going to throw a very obvious um, positive here, which was that, that Gio Reyna, we talked about how because of his club situation, not even because of the fans, I'm talking about the player, Gio Reyna. He really needed something, um, a little bit of an ego boost, confidence boost, because even if he barely plays for Nottingham Forest till the end of the season, we know he's going to come into the summer to Copa America with his USMNT confidence up. That will be up because of what he just did. He was our best player in the tournament. And it doesn't matter anymore if he plays for Nottingham Forest this season. If he gets minutes good, his confidence will be high, and he needs to find he needs to have a good Copa America because that can also help attract interest from other teams. Or or, or stay with Dortmund. Back to Dortmund and you know or st- for them. Dortmund tweeted about him, by the way. I know. I love that from them. <laughs> like all of a sudden they're like, Oh, we love Geo. It's like, well, clearly not. You didn't play him. Um, other positives. I thought that Haji Wright put in a shift. I don't think he was amazing, but what he was asked to do. I thought with oh, is Tyler Adams as his baby? Oh, it's very cute. Tyler Adams mm-hmm. brought his baby onto the field. Um, yeah, I thought that Haji Wright put in a shift, you know, especially because in the first 25, 30 minutes, we were playing very direct. Almost every time we got the ball, it was lumping it forward to either into the channels for Weya and Pulisic to chase or straight to Haji. And I thought considering that hasn't been his strength, I thought he did a pretty good job of being a target man. Yeah, I think it was tough for Haji because we thought he was going to be running through the channels with Gio feeding him, but it wasn't that. It was just like a freaking route one football, just sending it to him and hoping he can win headers and just being a target man. Um, I think he did fine for what was asked for him. It was a tough game for him based on the way Berhalter wanted to play. Uh, I thought he would have done a lot better if Gio was closer to him, but we had Gio far away from Haji. That didn't help. Another positive that we can put out, I'm going to say Tim Ream because – um, like many, many years ago, we were critical of Tim Ream. And then he came back from the dead to Fulham. And then now some people are saying that we need to move away from him. We need to get rid of him. And I think he just showed that, no, one, it's not time to get rid of him because he can contribute now. And I think getting yeah. results in the Copa America is important. Two, you, yes, you do have to transition out. Well, he's an important presence. I'm pretty sure him and Richards will communicate, talk, and it'll help improve. Richards made a mistake. Tim Ream was there to clean it up. Right. Yeah. Um, no, Tim Ream is by no means finished. No, he's going to be there in the Copa America. And I think even after he should be there. And over time, we shouldn't remove him from the roster, but maybe bench him and get someone else when we can trust someone. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think, think... the friendlies, you need to look at other options, though. Friendlies, because, yes. Because we have to prepare for 2026. So after Copa America, then I think we can, you don't eject him immediately, but you start looking at, can this guy is obviously not probably not going to be at the level for 2026, but then who is, you know, people also have to step up. Mm-hmm. That's the other, that's the other side. Of Reem that. was a positive to me because he, he, he showed that too. Um, and we'll go on next one. Yeah. Um, the substitutions, Greg Berhalter's substitutions. Johnny for Adams was the right move at halftime. Mm-hmm. Uh, Musa for Gio when we were 2 0 up and sort of defending the game. Balogun, too. Sense. Yeah. Balogun got, I thought, for a, a guy who's usually quite poor at managing in game, substitution patterns were good. And, and the starting lineup was good. Mm-hmm. Good starting lineup. 
So two things that we don't always necessarily agree with on Greg, he got right today. I'm usually more skeptical of his in-game management, but again, like the substitutions he made uh, for whatever I can remember, for whatever it's worth, probably would have done something very, very similar with similar <laughs> timings and all of that. Um, so that's definitely a positive. I'm trying to think if there's any more. Well, obviously, I'm not going to say win the trophy. That's ob- That's quite obvious. That's not yeah. that would be cheating. Um, Sergio Dest. Uh, sure, made a mistake defensively once, got bumped by Henry Martin and lost the ball. Shouldn't have done that. But looked super confident on the ball, taking on players, had a nice shot from when he dribbled. Uh, and, and I know we joked about the highlight reels and how he's doing it for the highlight reels. But at the end of the day, we've seen that the move to PSV – has brought back the Serginho Dest that is confident on the ball and can be very dangerous. And and that's why we talked about how I personally don't think Dest and Scali is actually a competition. I think the gap is actually quite big. I love the fact that Scali is the backup because if Dest can't go, I know he wasn't great against Jamaica, but he mostly is reliable and he will be. Uh, But I don't think the gap is small. I think it's quite noticeable on the ball, the difference between those two. And defensively, I think the gap is small. So that gap right there on the on the on the ball offensively yeah. with Dest is actually really big. Well, and also if you know, if even a few years ago you said we have a 21 year old starting in the Bundesliga to play right back for us, we would have taken that. We would have been like, oh hell yeah, oh yeah, but that's our backup now, right? And yeah, mm-hmm. Joe Scally did not have a good game. You can also argue, to be honest, that the goal that we conceded wasn't all on Scally. It was actually Tim Weah's man that made that run. Mm-hmm. But that's a different discussion. Scally is obviously not Serginho Dest, but I'm not as low on Scally as some people are. Uh, the other thing that I want to say, we were switched on from the first whistle. And to be fair, we always are against Mexico. They're always mm-hmm. up for a Mexico game, the boys. But after Jamaica, where we didn't start the game with the right mentality and the right intensity, we showed in this game that from the very first minute, we were going to be... We were here for it. We were up for it. And that was good to see. I mean, to me, that's the expectation. But, but yeah, it's always good to see it as a positive. Do you think um, having a crowd played a role in that? You think we start a little bit switched off with the empty stadium, silent? And, I'm not giving excuses. I'm just saying, could yeah, that play I mean, a role? It's possible also that we kind of thought the game was won, you know, with Jamaica missing all those players. We kind of like, okay, you know, this is not that we've won it already, but this is going to be you know, a piece of cake and, and maybe, maybe, I don't know. I, I can't speak to exactly why. Cause I don't know. I can't look in the players heads and see what they were thinking, but definitely didn't start that way today. So that's good to see. Um, other positives. I don't really have any that aren't related to player performance. Do you? No, we mentioned Burhalter in the game as a whole was a positive. We mentioned the players individually. We mentioned the result. Um, I think we could ask, were there any negatives? Yes. I thought there was. Yeah. Yeah. Of course there were. Do you want to start? Well, I'll, I'll start with one. Um, there's actually there's two that come to my mind, but I'll start one. I thought Greg with misused Giovanni Reyna, um, yes. and and the the moment Gio pushed high up the field, which was like one or two moments, one of them he scored a goal. Uh, if you want to get the best out of him, having him deep seems like a bit of a waste. Yeah. So what I would have done, and I think should consider that is maybe drop Weston a bit deeper because Weston is technical enough to connect the pass with the 10 and have more of Weston stay with Tyler and yeah. then Geo stay high up the field. Well, uh, and he also, didn't you that. don't need to push the fullbacks that high. That's one of the reasons he has his, because in Greg's four, three, three, he pushes the dual eights back to get on the ball. And the reason he does that is because he pushes the fullbacks so high up the field in the build out. The fullbacks don't need to be that high in the build out. They can get there later. In the build-out, I'd rather have A-Rob and Dest both a little deeper, closer to the center back, to be able to help with the build-out with a Tyler Adams and Weston McKinney. And then once we get that ball centrally, then we can overlap with the fullbacks. I disagree with Greg completely because I think it's it takes Giovanni Reyna out of the areas where he is most dangerous. Don't you think that also hurts A-Rob? Because the thing with A-Rob is with Greg's system, we hold possession, we're slow, and we control it. A-Rob is pushed high up the field, so he can't use his speed anymore like he uses on Fulham. Because at Fulham, he uses the speed, goes down, and gets those crosses. While in the U.S., he's forced to like actually hold the ball in tight spaces, try to combine, and that's not his game. His game is to like run, 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 find him, and he'll get in a cross, a dangerous cross. Yeah, yeah. 
So I think that also hurts a little bit A Rob's performance. It works for Dest because Dest can hold possession, dribble. But for A Rob, you're misusing him. I, I think those are the little tweaks that Greg needs to try to, if he's going to continue to be the U.S. men's national team coach, which it looks like he will be, the only thing we can hope is for little tweaks and little adjustments, which certain things have improved, like roster selection, um, starting 11. The in-game management for this game, it was impeccable. It was the right yeah. in-game management. But we've seen him do that and then shit the bed the next game yeah. with in-game management and be late with subs. So my only issue with that is he should probably try to tweak his system to better mold a Gio Reyna too. Like not not the whole thing. For Don't build around Gio and A-Rob. That's not what I'm saying exactly because you still have Pulisic, you still have other guys. But adjust to get the best out of Gio. Adjust to get the best out of Anthony Robinson. These little things that he can do instead of staying the same exact system. You know what he looks like at times, Pete? So when I was younger, uh, I still play it, but I played a lot of football manager. Mm -hmm. And what I would do when I was younger is I would start a team with one setup, one system, instructions, everything, and I would just play that way. Because yeah. I was a kid and I didn't care. I was like, I want to play this 4-3-3 here with Cristiano Ronaldo and I would keep playing that way. As I got older and I started to understand the game better, uh, by the game I mean soccer and the video game too, I had usually three to four different tactical setups that I would train with my team. And obviously I'm talking about a video game, guys. It, one thing is to have an idea, another thing is to implement it in real life. I'm talking about a video game. Um, and I had adjustments to that because of different opponents and how it would work better for this specific player and all that. And I kind of would want to see Burhalter have that with the national team, different setups like, hey, this opponent is just the perfect opponent for Christian Pulisic. So you have a system that's designed more to get the best out of Pulisic. Now, this one is for Geo, a system for Geo. We don't see that with him. It's just the same one, and he hopes that those players can fit into it. And sure, that works against Mexico. That works against CONCACAF. How will it work against better teams? We saw it, how it worked against the Dutch. It was a disaster. Mm. That yeah, is and what I wish. That's the test this summer, right? We have Copa America. We're going to face Uruguay. We're probably going to face either Brazil or Colombia if we get out. <sighs> Can he adjust to beat those kinds of teams? Don't get me wrong. We're psyched about this Mexico win. We are so much better than Mexico in terms of our player pool. So this is not really the real test. And do we get punished for starting the game like we did today against a better team? In my opinion, very easily. Yes, we could have been punished. So I'm excited. We won this. Congratulations. Three in a row. This is the expectation. And now we have to see what does it look like in the summer in Copa America? Um, because there are still plenty of question marks there that we can acknowledge while also enjoying this win. <coughs> um, okay. Let me get to a few more super chats and then we'll do player ratings. Mac Ryan says, Reina called us down. Do you mean calmed us down? He is not I a think cold calmed us down, yeah. He is not a tactical fit at Nottingham due to speed and defensive work rate. Geo to AC Milan. That is my favorite move for him. I've been saying that for a year. Geo to Milan, I think would be perfect. They need a 10. He fits in. He can play with his boys there, but I don't think that's going to happen. After crapping on Berhalter last game, why not give him credit after this win? We literally just did. <coughs> Dos Aceros is Cranji's McBasketball. Campeones, campeones. Yes. Real quick. Um, uh, Jurgen, I promised Jurgen would come and give his thoughts on this game. Yeah, look, it's exciting, of course. Mexico's in huge trouble, you know, because uh, they, if I'm coaching Mexico now, I'm saying, guys, you got to go and step on Gio Reyna's toes, you know, and you got to step on Sergio's toes and Pulisic's toes, but you're not going to step on a toes. You're not going to win the game anymore because that's huge nowadays in soccer, you know. And I told my boys in South Korea also, I said, you step on their toes, and they said they don't want to do that, so that's fine, but then you're not going to win the games. So I'm hoping to get coaching again soon here, probably with another national team that doesn't know all about my problem. But this one's going to be huge, you know. You really um, like those, don't you, Jurgen? Yeah, that was he used to say that all the time. You know, yeah, you got to get in there and step on their toes, you know. And I was like, really, that's your tactical instructions. <laughs> um, but yeah, so let's do player ratings now. Um, Turner. I, I think Turner gets a seven. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll put a seven too. Clean sheet when he was tested, which wasn't that much. He passed no. the test. I'll put a seven. Yeah. Yeah, was generally reliable. I don't remember any major mistakes. You still have that sense of shakiness from him from time to time, but not enough that it's impacting the game. So seven for Turner. You go first on Dest. Dest. Uh, he had one shaky moment where Henry Martin kind of like hit him from behind, but it wasn't really a foul. Could have been a Mexico goal if Henry Martin wasn't Henry, Mar Henry Martin. Uh, but outside of that, Dest was really good on the ball. Very confident. Um, it was kind of like a nightmare to deal with for for the the L3 the L3 um defense got a shot from long range that didn't really hit the target. I'll give him a 7.5 so above Turner. I thought he was better. Like Turner was reliable. I thought that step it up. That shaky moment was what deducted half a point. Otherwise he would have gotten an 8. So 7.5. Yeah. I'm with you on 7.5 for Dest. Um A Rob, I'll go first. I'm going to give A Rob a 4. And maybe that's a little harsh, but I didn't think he was very good either side of the ball today. I thought he was shaky mm -hmm. defensively, thought didn't contribute enough in attack. And this camp in general has not been a good camp for A-Rob. Um, I don't think he was the worst player on the field. But, you know, I'll give him 4.5. 4.5 is as generous as I'm willing to be. Yeah, I'll go average. I'll say 5. Um, thought he was a bit clumsy at time, But, again, it, it's what I was saying. I do think that the way we set up to play doesn't favor him. Sure, that, that doesn't change the fact that the performance wasn't great, but I'll say it was average. I don't think he was too bad, recovered a few times. Um, a lot, there was like the penalty kick, nothing on him. That was nothing. Santi just flopped. No, it was a flop. He yeah. got beat once by Lozano, but then he recovered, and then Lozano yeah. flopped and got a foul. It wasn't a foul. I don't think it was yeah. a foul. Yeah. Uh, I'll give him a five. Okay. Um, you go first on Richards. Richards, I'm actually giving a four. Um, I thought he was very clumsy, not good on the ball at all, which was a big surprise to me. Didn't look comfortable. Uh, it didn't look th like the Chris Richards that I'm used to watching for Palace and even for the United States in the past. Like last year in Nations League, he was incredible defensively and even scored a goal. This year, he was a bit disappointing in my opinion. I'm going to give him a four. Yeah, I'm giving him a four as well. Whatever the issue is, like you mentioned, last year he wasn't playing for Palace, but he balled out for us. And then now he's playing regularly and well for Palace. But this camp didn't do him any favors. Let's put it that or He didn't do himself any favors. The good thing is it's probably more of a confidence issue than a quality issue. We know the quality is there. He needs to show it when he's on the field, though. Otherwise, he's not going to be starting for much longer. Also, Pete, we got to remember th this camp, it, it was just two games. So sometimes players go, go through bad form where they play two, three, four bad games and then they yeah. pick it back. It can happen. So it was just two games. We talk about this a lot in World Cups, how some teams sometimes get lucky and their players just catch really good form in a short tournament. Sure. Um, so I, I'm not overly concerned about Richards at all. We know his level in the 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 the, the bigger amount of data that we have. He, yeah, he's fine. So larger yeah. sample sizes indicate yeah. that Richards is an excellent defender. Um, some kind of a slump. Reem, I'll go first. I'll give him a straight eight. Our most reliable, calming influence at the back, good with his distribution, mopped up on you know some of Richards' mistakes, and just generally was a really calming influence um defensively. So I'm giving him a solid eight. Yeah, I guess I'm just gonna bandwagon on that and give it an eight because I thought. I gave Des a 7.5, and I'll give Reem a higher rating. He wasn't as flashy as Des. No one's as flashy as Des. No. Let's be honest. No one's as flashy as Des. Because Des was doing it for the highlight reel. But Tim Reem bailed out Chris Richards on one play. He quickly read the play. He saw that Richards was losing it. He was already behind him right away. Uh, his passing range wasn't as good as it normally was. It wasn't as bad as Richards. But it wasn't as good as it normally was. But also, That's we cool. weren't really building out of the back. We were going so direct. Mm-hmm. So it was, uh, and it, I think it was also different having Geo yeah. drop back. I don't think he was used to that. Why did we play Brexit ball? I don't know. I don't know. Didn't make any sense to me. It was also so anti Burhalter. He loves those little like safe possession and hold yeah. the ball. He loves the 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 infamous what we talk about like moving the ball around the possession, no penetration. Just he loves to masturbate. Is that yeah, this was very unlike Greg. <laughs> it really and he was. went Brexit ball on this one, but uh, yeah, I'll give Reem an eight too. I'll bandwagon on that. <laughs> Just sorry for guys. Sorry, <laughs> the, the 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 joke was coming at some. I I, I the only sex Spicy joke. Jeff. Had... Spicy Jeff was happy to hear it. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um. T 
Tyler Adams. Uh, you want to go first on Tyler? Yeah. So I think I can't overemphasize how important his goal was because yeah. getting the lead right before halftime it also the just held the team. We came back at, at the second during the second half early. Our team was a bit more dynamic too, moving the ball fast. It seemed like everyone was psyched with that goal. Uh, changed the game completely. I thought we were better than um, than Mexico before the goal. And Tyler before the goal was reliable. He was doing the defensive work, doing the simple passes. Not great on the ball, like picking a nice pass or this should be. But he was picking the doing doing Tyler Adams. But that goal changed the game um, a lot from a morale standpoint. Everything and he didn't get injured. And then there's also the intangibles that Tyler always brings. That I'm not going to go through. I am actually going to give him a nine because of that, because mm -hmm. of how much it changed the game. Nine. I'm going to give him a nine because of how much, uh, because we could have gone zero zero at halftime, and then who knows? Mexico would have still. I knew I knew we were better, but that that goal was such a big game changer right there. And that's probably the best goal we've scored in years, in terms oh, of yeah. like delight. You know what I mean? I'm so, giving him a nine. Yeah, he's Tyler's my man of the match, even though he only played half the match because that goal changed everything. And what a goal! And also factoring in that he did just come back from injury to be able to hit that is was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, he may never score another goal like that in his career, but the timing was excellent. Um, next up was Wes. I'm going to give Wes a 6.5 because I don't think he was his usual Wes self, but he did have some really nice plays that stood out. Um, I thought sometimes he was a little slow or a little chaotic. Part of that might be being miscast by playing so high up the field. So that could have been part of it. But I think 6.5 is fair for Wes. Did he get the assist on Adams's goal? I don't actually remember. I think it was. I mean, no one really got an assist there because that. Sure, sure. Uh, um, he definitely was an average. I thought he did okay. I thought he was definitely above average. You gave a six point five. I, I guess I'll give. I, I also want to give him somewhere between like six, six point five, or seven, something within that range. So I can give. I'll, I'll give him a six. Definitely was an average. He was above average in this match. I'll give him a six. And yeah. they're saying yeah, he did. He did get the assist. So yeah, he got the assist on that goal. Sure. The goal was like Tyler I mean, Adams. Um, sure, uh, yeah. That that that's one of those assists that was like tactical manager could have got this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, Nathaniel Collessor could have gotten that. West gets extra credit for getting on Edson's head. I mean, I actually, Gio, think Gio got in Edson's head more than anyone. Gio did. I'll give Wes in a six. Um, better than the first game for sure. But again, I, I do think he's being misused a little bit. But yeah, different topic. Gio. You go, mm -hmm. oh, it's, damn, it's your turn. Okay. Geo, eight. I give Geo 8.5, just a I'll bit ahead of Reem, because even though I didn't think he was good in the role, that in terms of like building out of the back, I thought he was a little confused with some of the time. You would see him trying to occupy space, but then being a little like, oh, wait, where do I need to be here? Gave away the ball once under pressure, but it's hard because that's not really the role he's supposed to be playing. Um, but obviously he scored the goal. Um, created a really nice chance for Pulisic as well, or helped to create it. Um, and obviously his very intelligent conca calfing with Edson the whole time, he was always in control of that battle, right? He was always baiting Edson doing just enough to make Edson mad, but not enough to get a card. And then when Edson would try to make it more, he would just walk away. So the whole time he was just playing with Edson Alvarez. And by the time Weston got to Edson, he was so frustrated that you know Gio had been kind of toying with him the whole game but for me the best player from this camp was Giovanni Reina and he was the best player improved in the camp. their stock in this camp more than the man who some claim shouldn't even have been there uh player of the tournament actually Gio Reina in general yeah in absolutely because also against Trinidad and Tobago in the um in the group stage he scored too right yeah, I mean, in the game, too, he was doing a lot of defensive work. Also, the moment he went up the field, he might have gone, like, very high up the field. Might have been, like, two or three times, and he got a goal when he got yeah. it. A one-hit strike, a very tough strike, by the way. Not that Tyler strike Adams. was not easy to hit at all. No, it wasn't Tyler Adams' goal, but that Tyler Adams' goal is a different conversation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was a very impressive goal, too. Um, I might even be a bit harsh. I'm going to keep the eight because I already gave it, but it might even be a bit harsh. It might be something yeah. closer to Tyler Adams' rating. Yeah, I'm not giving him Tyler Adams, but I think 8.5 is more than fair. Um, I'll go first on on Pulisic. I thought Pulisic had a good game when we got him the ball. 
I think we didn't get him the ball as often as we could have, which is fine, honestly. Like, if we need Pulisic to play hero ball, then we're not we're doing something wrong. So I'm totally fine with Pulisic. He had a quieter camp. Oh man, you took the one I was gonna say. I think seven is fair. Yeah. So I because, just have for the same reason. Because he had really good. I mean, he was definitely heavily involved in that second goal. It was a moment of genius right there. Um, absolute genius 1v1 moment. Um, and, you know, was was a threat, definitely. Was a threat. Wasn't always super effective. But really, it was when we got him the ball that, you know, he showed his quality. It was a really nice touch on what could have been a goal that Ochoa saved, where Gio headed it towards him and he took it out of the air. I think he took it over, was it Vasquez? And then volleyed straight at Ochoa. But that was a really nice touch, too. So the quality is there. Um. You go first on Wea. Wea, I'm going to give Wea a six this game. I thought yeah. it was about the same level as like McKinney's performance. He wasn't bad. He wasn't great, but he wasn't average also. I thought he was affected. Did a lot of defensive work. Wea was tracking back. Like Weston, too. Weston was all over the place. Uh, and he had some dangerous moments there. Just couldn't get the cross right. I'm giving Wea a six. Yeah, I think six is fine. Worked worked hard. Doesn't maybe have the, the most quality in the world, but you know he's always going to put in a reliable shift for you, Tim Wea. Mm -hmm. Um Haji, I think Haji deserves a seven. Um, and I'm going to say that because, yeah, he didn't score and he didn't assist. And to be honest, he was a little offside, a little too much for my liking. But considering the role that he was asked to play today, which was to basically be a force against both Vasquez, if you watch what happens almost always when we're lumping that long ball to Haji, He's, you know, dropping in to try and hold it up or flick it on with his head, take it down. And he's got both Vasquez and Cesar Montes with him so much of the time. Um, and so I I think he put in a good shift in, in a tough role that he's not really used to playing for Coventry. Um, I'm, I'm giving him the same I gave McKinney and um, Wea. I, I'm a little bit harsher, I, but I, I, I do agree with what you said in regard to playing a role that he's not accustomed to that I don't even think he, he it's at his best. And like we said, we're playing Brexit ball, just lobbing the ball forward, hoping he'll play as a target man. And um, I thought he was going to run through the channels. I thought it was yeah. going to be Gio Reyna trying to find him, which is what we saw against Jamaica. And that's why I thought that Greg played him. So I'll give him a six. Okay. Substitutions. Now first one was Johnny. Um, you go first on Johnny. I'm going to give Johnny also a six. I thought that actually in the first 15 minutes that he was in, looked shaky. a little bit shaky on the ball, even passing range and everything. He had one pass outside the field altogether. Yeah, it was weird. Also, it wasn't that much pressure on him. But after that, he was very ball secure, made a lot of good stops, stopped some transition moments from Mexico, a lot of clearances in the air and everything. Um, he had actually two shaky moments, which one was also early. The penalty kick for Santi. I thought he did a poor job before that, uh, prior to that, clearing the ball with his header. He could have probably gotten a bit of a stronger head. I'm giving Johnny a six also. It wasn't a terrible performance. I saw some people praising him too. I, the weird thing about Johnny was I looked through Twitter real quick, and then there were people saying that he was shit, and there was people saying he was incredible. I don't think he was shit. I don't think he was incredible. I think it was slightly yeah. above average. More of like a McKinney in, in, in the way of performance. Johnny was just very low when he got in. It was very bad. And then he slowly... And I don't know. Up. Yeah, he picked up, and I thought he was good in the last, like, 30 minutes or so. Yeah. So Johnny's, I think, six. I'm going to give him a six also. I'm going to give Balogun a five because he came on. I don't think he was awful. I also don't think he did very much. Some of that was the game state that he came on in. The game kept getting interrupted by the chanting. Um, but after that, the late subs of Aronson and Musa and or Tillman, I'm not going to – because they were way too late, and most of the game – they were anything after the 80th minute i'm not really gonna gonna cover so i think balogun gets a five do you have a, a, an opinion on balogun i don't know much to say about balogun it was also the same thing he came in a, in a weird situation into the game right not much was offered I'll, I'll give him also an average performance just five yeah burhalter all right let's start here burhalter pretty much got the lineup correct and he got his in-game management correct Got the win, mm -hmm. got won the trophy, got the clean sheet. I don't agree with how he used that midfield, and I think that could hurt us against a better team. But I think seven is fine. I think a seven point five is fair for Burhalter. 
because I think beating Mexico is the expectation. Like, you're supposed to do this. We're much better than them. And you managed well enough to do it today, minus some things that I disagree with, but I think 7.5 is fair. I'll be a bit nicer and give him an eight uh, for this game, okay? Not for the tournament. If we go through the tournament, it's going to be a lot harsher, especially because of the Jamaica game. Uh, but I'll give Burhalter an eight for this game. Uh, like we said, we, we talked about the issues about still using the same system, the fullbacks. I don't think he's using A-Rob to the best of his ability. I don't think he used McKenney to the best of his ability. And didn't, definitely didn't use Gio Reyna, even though Gio performed not the best for Gio. Uh, so I'll give him an eight on this one. Got the trophy, got the win, clean sheet, was right about Tyler Adams. Uh, weird what he did with Haji, but it kind of worked, kind of. I think it could have been better. Um, but I, I, I think, like, it, we, are we going to try – what would be your rating for Burhalter for the camp? The camp bumps him down. Yeah, I'll probably say camp, it averaged out to be like a five because of this yeah, good one. He did the, the like he won the trophy, which is, mm -hmm. you know, the expectation, the bare minimum expectation, like we've talked about. He did that, but he made it harder on himself than he, than he had to than it had to be. That's just the truth. So I think five is fine for the camp, and most of that is actually dragged up by what he did against, you know, Mexico. But I mean, look, it's fun to celebrate and enjoy and all of that. But I think especially when I do the Patreon tomorrow. The Patreon video, I'll, I'll just point out like this is really wasn't working for most of that first half and, and Tyler Adams goal changed the game. So, but Hey, you know, sometimes it doesn't happen. So, and we'll criticize Greg when it does, he started Tyler Adams, which was a risk. If he doesn't start Tyler Adams, doesn't get that goal. So, um, yeah. So I think that's pretty much it now. Really guys, it's Copa America, right? That's what's coming next June. We have two friendlies against Brazil and Colombia. Both teams that were probably going to have to face one of those teams in the second round probably should have tried to get Argentina. I don't know if Argentina was available, to be honest. But either way, two good friendlies. At least we're not playing some CONCACAF friendlies or something against Copa America teams. And then, really, Greg's fate should be decided with Copa America. What's going to happen in the summer? Can he get that elusive win a marquee win against a team in, in a major tournament that's what we're all gonna be waiting to see i have my doubts very open to greg proving me wrong um use geo as a 10 i think you increase your chances i really mm -hmm. do so overall on the face of the camp i think it was a very greg performance we got the job done without ever looking very convincing i think that was a fair assessment of the camp mm -hmm. um but yeah, I don't know if there's anything else that we need to talk about. Tack, you're going to do your seven things we learned tomorrow, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'll have the Patreon video out tomorrow. And what else? I think that's most of it. Oh, did I? I never played the underdog video. Let me play the underdog video now, guys. And smash that like button if you haven't done it already. Fantasy Sports is back with a new and improved Pick'em game across all sports that makes it easy to play fantasy sports with just a few clicks. Each sport allows you to build a parlay that includes between two and five predictions about the outcomes of player projections. As you would expect, the more picks you include, the greater the potential payout. Don't go crazy with it and play responsibly, but adding a few bucks here and there to a game gives it a little more excitement and stakes. Use my promo code 11YANKS or click the link in the description to start playing and Underdog will match whatever you put in your account up to $100. Enjoy! Alright guys, if you haven't smashed that like button yet, do so already. Have a great night. Everything will go back to normal programming now until November. Thanks for hanging as always. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for all the super chats. Ah, got one more here from Cubone Maker. Wes gets extra credit for getting in Edson's head. Uh, Pete, before you go, just one thing, because people are asking, camp recap still coming. Uh, guys, obviously I have the seven things we learned video tomorrow, but I'm pretty sure me and Pete throughout this week, since no Americans will play abroad, there's nothing like that. You guys are probably going to get a video or a stream here and there. And obviously the topics will be revolving around this camp and what we can look forward. So if there's going to be camp recaps, probably on both channels in different ways with different discussions, expect that throughout the week because that's all we have. The Americans abroad only play again next weekend. So that's yeah. what we'll be talking about during the week. 
Yeah. All right, guys, have a great night. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. For some of you, it's already Monday if you're on the East Coast, and uh, we'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.